two and a half years ago, I dropped this video, the best Red Hat Linux clones, but a ton has changed in the enterprise Linux world since I dropped that video. And I can't lie, the video has aged like milk. So it's time for an update. Let's start with some context on what is going on in the enterprise Linux space. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL for short, is a distribution developed by Red Hat. It is a long-term support RPM distribution using DNF as the package manager. Its package base comes from an earlier version of Fedora, but instead of the 13th month support you'd get with each Fedora release, each RHEL release gets a whopping 10 years of support and maintenance, and even more if you buy an extended support add-on. This makes Fedora kind of a testing ground for many things that RHEL will get in the future, for example, RHEL 10, which has only been out for about two months or so, is based on Fedora 40. So it wouldn't be entirely inaccurate to call RHEL a Fedora LTS. That said, it is worth noting that Fedora is still entirely its own project that is just sponsored by Red Hat. And they have made decisions before against Red Hat's preferences. For example, Fedora ships BetterFS, which is the default file system, while Red Hat 10 defaults to XFS, and it doesn't even support ButterFS. Another thing that makes RHEL special is that a lot of new technology is being pushed into Linux right now, and it's either funded by Red Hat or ran or heavily contributed to by Red Hat developers. There's a lot of examples of this, such as GNOME Shell, Wayland, SystemD, Policy Kit, and much more. But Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a paid Linux distribution. So back in the day, CentOS existed as a community maintained Linux distro that took Red Hat's package source code and rebuilt everything to provide a free RHEL alternative with community backed support instead of corporate backed support. Red Hat did buy them out, but they'd still kept CentOS around for years. However, in a year or so leading up to the previous RHEL clone video I made, Red Hat took CentOS and moved it to the upstream of Red Hat. Before this, Fedora would have a release and then RHEL would inherit from Fedora to build a new RHEL release. Then CentOS would create a rebuild that the community could use. However, now Red Hat is built on top of CentOS first, which inherits from Fedora. This change doesn't seem like that big of a deal and actually makes CentOS even more of a useful project. However, Red Hat completely fumbled the messaging. Instead of just making this change for CentOS 9 and most likely having no community pushback from just a simple change, they made a new version of CentOS entirely separated called CentOS Stream. Then they killed the main version of CentOS A after version A already released, which is not a good look for an LTS style distribution like CentOS. This resulted in new community backed clones of RHEL such as Alma Linux and Rocky Linux that I showcased in that last video. Since that video has been published, Red Hat made themselves look even worse by removing access to Red Hat's source code for non-Red Hat customers, which makes it harder for the community to give or make rebuilds of RHEL. Although to be fair to Red Hat, this wasn't done to target the community that made rebuilds, but instead to target companies like Oracle, which are making RHEL rebuilds of their own with their own support model, basically stealing Red Hat's business model on top of their own product. As a response to RHEL, Oracle, CIQ, Rocky, and SUSE formed OpenELA as a group to provide a open source code for a RHEL rebuild. It also changed the purposes of some of the projects, which I will go into more detail a little bit later. So with all this action happening in the enterprise Linux space and all these newer options available, what the hell am I supposed to use if I don't want to pay for RHEL? Well, let's look through some of the options. And first, we're going to start with RHEL free. For those who don't know, Red Hat offers a no-cost developer subscription aimed at individual users. With this, you can use Red Hat on up to 16 systems for demo, prototyping, QA, small production uses, and cloud access. Red Hat does also recommend it for personal servers, home labs, and small open source communities. The main problem with RHEL Free is that you need to register the system with the subscription manager and sign into a Red Hat account. This is relatively simple to do, but it is still kind of annoying if it's just something you want to throw into your home lab, which is why I would recommend 
something like Alma Linux instead for this type of use case. However, if you are trying to learn Red Hat, you are getting the same version of Red Hat with the free plan as you would if you were a paid subscriber. Also, one of the best things about Red Hat Free is you get access to all the documentation that Red Hat offers for their enterprise customers. I personally don't ever use RHEL Free in my production systems production, but I do have a developer account to access their documentation because it is really one of the best sources for documentation on Linux. And almost everything in its docs will apply to one of these RHEL clones. So if your use case is that you want to learn enterprise Linux, you really can't beat RHEL free. Now let's move on to CentOS Stream. As I said earlier, this is directly upstream of Red Hat. So any new fixes will show up in CentOS Stream first. Although that does make it slightly less stable to RHEL, but by slightly, I really do mean slightly. CentOS Stream is still going to be far more stable than any non-LTS distro like Fedora or a, like non LTS of Ubuntu. Also, RHEL builds on top of CentOS Stream, which is basically the same environment of RHEL, just with newer packages that just fix some bugs. Now, if you're trying to run something important in production, I would still prefer another rebuild like Alma just to get a bit of extra stability. However, if I wanted to run Enterprise Linux on a desktop for whatever reason, I would prefer to run Stream as a desktop with slightly newer packages compared to one of the other clones. It is a great option for home labs as well. Now let's talk about some of the community backed clones. And first I've mentioned it a few times, we have Alma Linux. Alma Linux was created in 2021 by Cloud Linux after Red Hat went ahead and killed CentOS 8. The goal was to create a drop-in alternative for CentOS users. In March 2021, Cloud Linux spun off Alma Linux to have its own 501 nonprofit, which gets a $1 million a year pledge from Cloud Linux. Originally, Alma Linux was bug for bug compatible with RHEL, which means that it was as close to a RHEL clone as possible. However, after Red Hat restricted their source code, Alma Linux decided to become a binary compatible clone, which means that any program built for Red Hat will be compatible with Alma although it's not an identical system anymore. Alma Linux is my favorite RHEL clone because a whole community is built around it, and the community is starting to build some very cool things around Alma Linux. For example, Alma Linux has their own Kitten version, which is basically a dev branch for future versions. Red Hat recently dropped support for older x86-64 v2 CPUs, but Alma Linux 10 supports those devices in their specific repo for that. Finally, there are quite a few cool side projects going on in the Alma Linux space, such as the Alma Linux Atomic SIG, working on building an immutable desktop variant of Alma Linux. Outside of that, Alma Linux tends to be the fastest RHEL clone. Two good updates when RHEL actually updates, and my Alma Linux systems have been super damn reliable. And by my systems, it's only really one, it's a mini PC, so... With this, I do think Alma Linux is the best option for most people who need an enterprise Linux system for production, but don't need the support packages Red Hat provides for their systems. Next up is Rocky Linux. This is another community backed RHEL clone that came out of the death of CentOS 8. It was founded by Gregory Kurt Kurtzer, sorry, who was a co-founder of CentOS and named after Rocky McGraw who passed away earlier than the formation of Rocky Linux. The Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation was formed in January of 2021 and by April of that year their rebuild was out. Unlike Alma Linux, even after RHEL restricted their source code, Rocky Linux has stayed bug for bug as a compatible clone of RHEL. So this is much closer of a clone to RHEL as compared to something like what Alma Linux provides. So if you're looking for something as close to RHEL as possible and you can't use RHEL for free for whatever reason, Rocky Linux is the way to go for that. Rocky also supports RISC-V CPUs. While RHEL does that too, Alma Linux does not, so that could be a cool benefit for Rocky. However, because Rocky is trying to be bug for bug compatible with RHEL, they do tend to move a little bit slower since everything needs to be implemented into RHEL first before it makes its way into Rocky. Some have argued that the governance of Rocky Linux is flawed. 
as the Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation is not actually registered as a nonprofit, but is a public benefits corporation that is supposed to be a self-imposed for nonprofit. Additionally, Gregory Kurtz is the president of Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation that runs Rocky, but Gregory Kurtz also owns CIQ, which is a company that provides their own version of Rocky Linux with corporate support similar to what Red Hat does for RHEL, so this could be a conflict of interest. Additionally, Rocky Linux also gets their package sources from loopholes by getting SRPMs through Red Hat universal base images and pay per use cloud instances. These are hacky workarounds to RHEL subscription and frankly seem like kind of a legal gray area to me. Definitely as a non-lawyer, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Although Rocky states there and I quote, legal advisors have assured us that we have the right to obtain the source to any binaries we receive. So take for that what you will. All of this again makes Rocky a closer clone to RHEL than Alma Linux is. But just some of these things about Rocky still make me gravitate a little bit more towards Alma Linux. Now let's talk about some of the RHEL clones that are not community backed. And let's start with Oracle Linux. Back in 2006, Oracle ran a business building a lot of software for RHEL, such as the Oracle database. But this did mean many of their customers were purchasing RHEL subscriptions just to run Oracle software. So Oracle introduced Unbreakable. Linux, which was their own support program for RHEL that was also cheaper. One thing that makes Oracle Linux special is that it has its own unbreakable enterprise kernel, which has some Oracle developed kernel optimizations. And this is often based on newer versions of mainline Linux, as opposed to the Red Hat kernel. It is also, of course, the recommended RHEL clone for running Oracle products on. Oracle Linux is free to use, but if you want corporate support, you have to buy a subscription from Oracle. Now, not technically a RHEL clone, but is definitely, definitely worth a mention, and that is Fedora. This can be a great RHEL alternative because Fedora is upstream of RHEL. The environment of the OS tends to be very similar to a RHEL environment, but with much newer packages. So if you want something similar to use as RHEL, but not an LTS Fedora is a pretty decent way to go, especially if you're running it on a desktop computer or a home lab, those are great use cases. However, if you're looking for an LTS distribution like RHEL, stay away from Fedora. Now, real quick, an update on a bunch of the distributions that I mentioned in the last video. They have since been discontinued, so we'll go over those. And then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the RHEL clones that we talked about so you can see some of the differences for yourself. First off, in my last video, I showed Euro Linux as a smaller corporate-backed clone of RHEL, but Euro Linux is no longer maintained as a distribution, and they themselves are recommending the migration to Rocky Linux. I also showed Vs or Vis Linux as another corporate backed enterprise Linux clone, but there hasn't been a release since the beta for nine, and it seems like a dead project for now. In a similar vein, Navy Linux, which I mentioned in the last video as a smaller alternative, they haven't released since May of 2020. So, probably going to call this project dead. Finally, Circle Linux, which is a Chinese rebuild of RHEL backed by Huawei and Tencent. They haven't had a release since July of 2024 with Circle Linux 9.3, and we're currently on RHEL 9.6 for the RHEL 9 series, so it's definitely behind, and I kind of want to call it dead. Like I said in my last video, aged like milk with all these options being discontinued, but the options that still exist have evolved. So let's kind of compare those now with the chart. Now here is my comparison sheet. And as you can see, Rocky is the only distro here fully bug to bug compatible with Red Hat, while Alma and Oracle are just binary compatible. And CentOS Stream is a upstream, 
of or else so it won't be fully compatible just because there may be newer packages with ABI changes. All of these distros have a 10 year life cycle except for CentOS Stream, which only has a five year one. Red Hat and Oracle provide first party support for their distros, whereas CIQ provides corporate support for Rocky Linux. And you may kind of argue their first party support since CIQ heavily involved with Rocky anyways, with the same owners, but technically on paper, CIQ is third-party support. Alma Linux, you can get third-party enterprise support for through Tuxcare and Cybertrust. Now, Alma Linux has been able to ship major releases the fastest of any RHEL rebuild with just seven days between RHEL 10 and Alma 10, and they delivered Alma Linux 9.6 the same day as RHEL 9.6. Rocky Linux takes a bit longer, about 15 days between RHEL and Rocky 9.6, and 23 days between RHEL and Rocky 10, and Oracle can deliver minor updates a bit faster with 7 days between RHEL and Oracle Linux 9.6. Oracle 10 took 47 days after RHEL 10 to come out, which is quite a long time in comparison. I also checked the compatibility with some common software. Uh, cPanel is officially supported by the cPanel team on RHEL, Alma, and Rocky, but not Oracle or Stream. I also checked Oracle Database since it's very common to run Oracle software on RHEL, and Oracle officially supports running it on RHEL and, of course, Oracle Linux, which not, not much of a surprise there. As for bonus features, right now Rocky supports RICV and Oracle has its unbreakable kernel, but Alma has the kitten branch, which is the edge branch essentially and supports more older hardware that RHEL doesn't want to support, and then we're down to add things that don't break binary compatibility. Finally, ownership-wise, Oracle and Red Hat are owned by mega corporations, which honestly is probably something you want if you are purchasing a support package, but for your own personal projects, you probably want something that's a bit more of a community-backed project, which Alma Linux is the best since it is backed by a real nonprofit and not just a pretend nonprofit that's actually a pun public benefit corp like Rocky is. So with this, here are my final use cases I recommend for each. RHEL itself is the best option for enterprise use. Alma Linux is my go-to RHEL clone for any other use case due to it being binary compatible, but having a bigger community around it, plus providing bonuses like increased hardware support, and it's the fastest for getting updates. CentOS Stream is great if you want an enterprise Linux-based desktop or need something for your home lab, and I don't mind newer packages at the slight expense of stability. RHEL Free is great if you're trying to teach yourself Red Hat, thanks to it literally just being RHEL and giving you access to all the documentation. And then Rocky Linux is the closest of the clones to actual Red Hat, which is good if you need something identical to Red Hat, but you don't need that corporate support. And then Oracle is good if you want to purchase corporate support for cheaper than regular RHEL, or if you just want to run Oracle software. So that's our video covering all the options in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux space. I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you found something slightly beneficial if you're curious about all these different options. I will leave a link down below to a article with the chart and everything we talked about. So check below if you're interested in that. And for more videos like this, do make sure you subscribe to this channel. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good. Bye.